Man in the High Castle. Yeah. Uh, we're up to second season now. Mm-hmm. Um, for you, what sort of challenges, I guess, came up with that particular show as an actor? Uh, well, that show... Well, to start initially, I uh, when, you, when you get a part on a, a television show, there's a bunch of auditions. Mm-hmm. Um, and I haven't auditioned in 12 years. I, I don't do it anymore, because I, not because I think I'm awesome, because I'm terrible at it. So we, my manager puts me in a position where when things come across his desk, we just refuse them to push, to force an offer. And on that job, it was a mistake because all these actors had gone through like seven auditions and mix and match and all these tests. And I get there and don't realize how big the scope of the world is. Uh, and I panicked. It's the, probably the biggest budget thing I've done in maybe 10 years. And uh, I arrived the first day and there's like, 300 people in period costumes in downtown Seattle where we shot the pilot. We shoot the show in Vancouver. Um, and uh, all this Nazi iconography on the side of buildings. I'm like, what the fuck have I signed on to? <laughs> and then I started realizing like, the producer of the show is Philip K. Dick's daughter, the guy who wrote the book. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot of responsibility. Mm-hmm. So I started panicking. And my first scene, it was pretty rough. There was a lot of things that, like, German words that I hadn't thought of, uh, and I, so I wasn't prepared. But the, she came over to me, uh, Lisa Dick, Philip Kiddick's daughter, like, and said that they celebrated when I was cast, and her father would have loved it, and it eased me, and I was able to do it. And it's, I, I really love being on the show. It's complicated because the first year, uh, like the tone of it, and just sort of the world that we live in in the show, it's really depressing, and it gets you. Like, uh, and but then you you get used to anything. And I remember the first time Hitler worked, and our names, not our character names, not our actual names, are on our trailer doors. So I'm like smoking a cigarette, walking to makeup. I'm like, oh, Hitler's here today. <laughs> Took a picture of it, and post. And so we're so used to that that sort of like iconography and that and the idea of the world that we live in. It's our job. Uh, to last year at San Diego Comic Con, uh, the show did this pop up experience where we had to all go and uh, tour around, it's like virtual, we had our sets there, it was a virtual reality thing where you could walk around our world. And so they're like, go there in your off time and, uh, and take some photos. So we were on our way to the, t- to the uh, IMDb yacht and we were drunk out of our fucking minds. And, because this is what you do in Comic Con, you have like 12 hours of press in the day and then at night you get wasted. And it's like, you know, also it's like a reunion. You see people, like I see Jerry and Jensen from Supernatural, people that I don't see all the time, people that I've known for, you know, uh, my, the entire, entirety of my career, including, uh, what's his name? Who's the little short guy in Austin Powers? Uh, ben, ben Troy. Ben Troy. No, 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 the, the taller short guy. <laughs> That's right. Austin Seth Green. Seth Green. <laughs> <laughs> he hates me for some reason. And he's always hated me my whole career. I think because he's best friends with Brecken Meyer, and Brecken somehow thought that I stole his thunder and road trip, which is my first film. I was like such an innocent kid. So happy to be in Hollywood. I couldn't believe it. And uh, so this guy's always hated me. So uh, the year before, I'll get back to my story in a minute. But the year before, <laughs> there's, a, there's a party at Comic-Con in San Diego, the, the uh, Entertainment Weekly party. It's like how we close it out. So every person who invited, basically every celebrity goes to this. So I woke up to Seth Green and I am hammered. And so, and he's hammered too. And he was like, I don't know why we've always, you know, had a problem. And I'm like, he's this tall. And I'm like, I don't know why we've always had a problem. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, we should be friends. And I'm like, oh, cool. And I'm so drunk. I don't know why I did it. I grabbed his, I petted his head and I kissed the top of it. And he's immediately furious. And my buddy was like, you just fucking touched a little person on the top of the head. They hate that. Now he hates me again. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, last year we're, we're going to the IMDb yacht. And uh, we stumbled past our experience and we had the security guard let us in. So we're taking photos, so they told us to tweet things. We take photos in front of uh, me and the cast and a couple of my local buddies, uh, take photos on the set. And then we took one photo in Hitler's office and we posted it on Twitter. And it's up for like two days. At like four o'clock in the morning on Sunday, I get a call from Amazon publicity in New York City. Take that photo down. It was a photo of us in front of a photo of Hitler. Because it was his office. He had a picture of himself yeah. above his desk. It did not even occur to me. So you get used to it. The point of the story is you get used to anything. It's just the world that we live in now. But it's, it's a great show. We start our third season uh, in two weeks. Cool. Yeah.